uh, sacrificial duties of the priests were assigned. The Levites, by necessary, uh, varied in the uh, Israelite uh, style of that exchange. We see that the manner and the place of worship became more stabilized after the 40 years of the wilderness wanderings, the migration, and, uh, and to the new, more stabilized type of worship that became uh, necessary to men to fulfill positions, uh, such as porters, some of them were traveling teachers, some were known as social workers. They got created or had a financial support for the priest. You see, uh, in the before Moses passed from the scene, he told as he set some things down in order that God had spoken to him that everyone when they got to the promised land or into Canaan, the tribes would all be assigned uh, an, an, an inheritance. They would all be given cities. Everyone would have you know, something that would be given to them that would be passed down to their children, to their children's children, to the next generation, and so forth. But there was one that did not receive an inheritance. And those were the, that was a tribe of Levi. But you see, God maintained the tribe of Levi through the gifts, through the tithes, through the financial support of the other tribes. They maintained their families by certain fees and dues that were paid from the public service, from which uh, there was a common fund. The only distinctive part of the high priest was a tenth part of the tithes that was assigned to the Levites. Uh, the the uh, priests had 13 cities that were assigned to them. They, this was not their inheritance, but these 13 cities were assigned to them for their living. Uh, this included the uh, suburbs er areas. Uh, this gave them some extra ground for their uh, animals. Uh, there was 48 cities that allotted to the whole tribe of Levi that equ uh, equaled one twelfth of the Israel land uh, at the time of the distribution. Uh, the cities were scattered amongst the different tribes as center of instructions. Uh, it's estimated that there was 1,000 cub square cubits, which was about uh, 350 acres that was attached to each of them. And you see that 350 acres, not much ground, to, uh, to feed another tribe, to feed another, you know, another group of people. You know, so you see that they were totally dependent upon the other tribes for their financial well-being. God also had a provision within there to take care of the family. <coughs> the Levites, or the tribe of Levites. You see that they had, uh, amongst this 305 acres, was to serve for gardens, for vineyards, and for pastures. Uh, but yet, you know, when you look at that's not much for maintenance. Not much there for compensation. But you... But they did not receive an inheritance of the land for their own territory. And yet, the further provision there for which was made for the Levites was through the tithing from the, tri the tribes. Uh, this was for the services rendered. A consistent part, tenth part of the produce from the land that was allotted to the other tribes. It was to pay for the whole tribe of Levi, who would in turn pay one tenth of that tenth of the tithe to the priest. So you see the, the kind of the trickle down economics. The Levites received a tenth, but of that tenth, they took a part of that tenth to make sure that the priests were taken care of. 
The tithe was to relieve the Levites from spending time on making a livelihood. The priests were to be, and, and the Levites, their whole job, their whole duty was of service unto the Lord first. Then their service unto servicing of the other tribes. Their service to, uh, was part of their duty in uh, the preparing of the sacrifices throughout the year. Uh, the especially from last week's lesson of the Day of Atonement and all the sacrificing that went on that whole day. It took a lot of individuals working together, being very well organized to make it all happen the way God had it planned. And we see that the Levites had a certain interest in the second tithe, which was a portion set aside of the first tithe that was paid. You see, every uh, third year, there was a special feast that took place. Every, uh, every year, there was a feast that took place at the sanctuary. But on the third year, there was a feast that took place at, in people's homes. Now, you realize the tribe of, e uh, uh, of the Levites, they had no home. So, if people were considered when they brought their tithe, they could invite the priest into their home to eat. But if people weren't considerate and then weren't or really weren't thinking, the priest could not invite themselves on that third year. They had to be invited uh, from, by the, the person that was doing the offering of their tithe. The uh, tithe consisted of a tenth of all that remained after the payments of the first fruit, of the seed, of the fruits, the calves, the lambs, kids. And the first tithe also belonged to God as a sovereign and owner of the soil. So when we, we see from studying the Old Testament tabernacle plan of how God instituted the taking care of the ministry. And yet when we look at the, in the New Testament, of God's provision for the ministry. You know, it, it hasn't changed. What has changed is the fact of the way we view our tithes and our offerings. The way we view our giving. You know, a lot of people say, well, and, you know, we're not under the law. So our tithes and our offerings, you know, doesn't count anymore, you know. Well, if you love God, it will count. Because if you have a heart that wants to please God, you will be a cheerful giver. That's right, yes. And, and you don't have to you know, sit down and count your pennies and nickels and dimes and say, well, this is, these belong to God and I'll keep the rest. <laughs> but we see that uh, the, the God owns everything. It, it, everything that we have was not really, it's not really ours, it's just borrowed because it already belonged to God. That's right. When you think about the fabric on which those chairs are covered and the metal that those chairs are made out of, where did it come from? It came from some part of the earth. Mm -hmm. And the earth and the fullness thereof is what? God's. God's. Didn't belong to chair techs or anybody else, but it belonged to God. And God has just allowed us to use it. The, the homes that our homes are made out of, you know, is whether it's brick, or wood. You know, God planted the trees. God created the trees, and man just harvested it so that it, we have a, a dwelling place to get us out of the. The cold, and now that the weather is changing, boy, this is great. Yes. I've enjoyed the cool mornings. But I know that what's coming is not going to be just cool mornings. It's going to be really cold mornings. And, uh, and I thank God for a shelter. Yes. So, you know, the tithes and the offerings that was given, as far as I, that was instituted in the tabernacle, it was... Just the rent 
on what already belonged to God. And this was to maintain the, the priest. Now in Le Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 31, uh, this is a, a hard thing because people don't want to have to look at this because it's like, this is a, this gets down to the nitty gritty. Because see, I I've heard many people say when it comes to tithes and offerings, well, I, I just couldn't give my tithes or I couldn't give my offerings this week because the unexpected bill and of course gas went up. I thank God that the gas went down. You know, it's still 363, but you know, you know, it's better than four dollars or five dollars.